Good morning, I'm Dan Hunter with today's Daily Dose. Uh, we're going to be in Psalm 130 if you have your Bible handy and want to turn there. Uh, normally, I'm a very busy guy. I keep my schedule really full, and from sunup to sundown, there's always something that I have in my schedule. Maybe your schedule is similar to mine. Uh, but we tend to overfill our schedules with things that really just don't have any eternal significance, and we rush around and stress over things that probably really don't matter. But uh, when COVID first hit, it, it brought my whole normally insanely busy schedule just to this complete halt, and I found myself in this period of waiting. And so I decided to go to Scripture and figure out what the Bible had to say about waiting. And so today I want to read and, and talk just a little bit about what I found out there. Uh, I'm in Psalm 130. I'm going to start in verse 5. It says, I wait for Yahweh. I wait and put my hope in His word. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for there is faithful love with the Lord, and with Him is redemption in abundance, and He will redeem Israel from all its sins. As we look at verse 5, it talks about putting our hope in His word. And that hope is something that consumes our entire being, everything from our body to our mind to our soul. And in fact, some translations use the word soul in that verse. And so uh, as we talk about hope, biblical hope is really just looking forward with anticipation towards something that God promised, that we have full confidence and assurance will happen because of our faith in Him. So what is the source of our hope during periods of waiting? Well, it's his word, and, and there are two different interpretations that we can look at when we talk about the word of God. First of all, that's scripture, right? And uh, we find strength, we find hope in reading and studying the promises in the Bible, and that's how we spiritually tank up. It's kind of like uh, if you're stuck in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, which would you rather have? Would you rather have a full tank of gas or a tank of gas that's running on fumes? Chances are you're going to have more hope in the tank that's filled up, right? And as Christians, our fuel is the Word of God, and our hope is renewed when we read His Word. And when we get to those periods of being stuck in times of waiting, if we are spiritually fueled up from God's Word, then we will have a much greater chance of successfully getting through those tough times. Another interpretation for our source of hope is Jesus Himself, right? John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the Word. It tells us that Jesus was the Word. As Christians, our relationship with Jesus is what should come first above all else that we do. He is what we should be all consumed with. And when we go through those times, those periods of waiting, if we are spiritually fueled up um, and if we are relying on Jesus himself and our relationship with him is, is thriving, then we will also make it through. Uh, but sometimes when we go through those times of waiting, we feel weak and we feel like the situation is out of our control because realistically it is. But the Bible tells us that when we are weak, his strength is perfect and is specifically made known to us through our times of weakness. So periods of waiting force us to rely on his strength and not on our own. So what are we supposed to do during our periods of waiting? I already mentioned that we're supposed to be in God's word regularly, but we're also supposed to regularly be active in a prayer. Micah 7, 7 says, As for me, I watch and hope for the Lord. I wait for God my Savior. My God will hear me. And then in Psalm 40, verse 1, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. When we spend time in prayer, know that your prayers never go unheard. But communication with God is a two-way street. You see, we are to pray to Him and let our concerns be made known. But we're also to listen for His response in our own lives. And we need to be willing to wait for that answer because He will answer us. Psalm 38, 15 says, Lord, I wait for you. You will answer, Lord my God, which is a great promise. Waiting for the Lord will always culminate in an answer. And it may not always be the answer that we're looking for or that we would desire but remember that the goal of any situation isn't to glorify ourselves in our desires, but it's to glorify God in all things. Psalm 119, 166 tells us that as we wait, we are to continue to follow the Lord's commands. As Christians, that means living as we ought to live and following the commands that we see in Scripture. But it also means making the most of our time. And as we wait, typically that means that we have more time available to us. And that's time that we could tell others about Jesus. At Journey, we talk a lot about making disciples who make disciples. And that starts with you and me. While we're in those periods of waiting, 
that makes our schedule wide open to be able to tell people about the good news of Jesus Christ and to make that mission come to life. So to summarize, while we wait, we're to find hope in our relationship with Jesus and also in Scripture, taking courage and being confident of the good things that are to come. And while we wait, we're to be in prayer and also to be listening for God's response to us. And while we wait, we're to continue to live out biblical commands and to spread the good news of Jesus with others. I'm praying for you. Please pray for me as we continue to learn what it means to wait for the Lord.